today is such a nice sunny day outside, Same. so we all just went. I've also received quite a lot of emails from you guys about the sausage casserole that we did and how do you do it so really 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 quickly if you've got a slow cooker easiest thing in the whole world brown off some sausages dice up some onions carrots pop a tin of baked beans in is there anything else onions carrots baked beans Tomato, chopped tomato. Tin of puree. chopped tomatoes or tomato puree, and then just a sausage casserole um, sachet that you add a bit of water to. Throw it all in, brown the sausages. If I didn't already say that, just brown them. Just you don't have to brown them if you're short on time, but it's just that they actually look like fingers. If you don't brown them, they don't look a nice colour. So just brown them, put them all into your slow cooker, and leave it on low for any time really between five or six and nine hours. I think I didn't think food really burn, burns in the slow cooker not unless you leave it in there like super long but we usually leave ours in for about six hours and it's delicious serve it with some giant Yorkshire puddings so nice I got back a little bit later tonight we're having a really super cool and quick dinner I saw this on Facebook but basically you get some eggs I've whisked a few up here you pour them in a pan and then you add two slices of bread. I've got Morrison's bread because they were small slices and I couldn't find any other bread that had small slices. And then you put them in the bread, flip them over and it's meant to make like an egg sandwich. <laughs> like a, an omelette sandwich. So we're going to have that with some tomatoes and cucumbers tonight. Let's see if this works. Okay guys, this is already an epic fail. So let me just get rid of that light there. So basically I put, <laughs> I can only fit one slice of bread in. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to make it with just one slice. Oh, I'm about to burn the thing. How am I gonna make this work? Okay, we've worked it out guys. Pop a bit of cheese on my bed. Cheesy, cheesy. Well, that's enough. I'll have a squidging out everywhere. And then you pop the camera up quickly before this all burns. <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is definitely gonna work, but we're gonna give it a go. So you're gonna fold that over. Oh, this looks so good. I think that's not that bad actually. Hold it over that way. Hold it over. See the top slice needs to be side by side so that you just flip it. But obviously we can't do that because the pan's not big enough. I'm just gonna place the top slice on. Push it down. I'll carve it more egg on that. A bit more egg on it. Yeah, then flip it. And then flip it over and cook yeah. that side. Yeah. Okay, and this is when it's about to be a big fail. No. Just wash it all on, just throw it No, on. no, babe, it's egg, it's disgusting. I've got to be delicate with egg, it makes you feel ill. And then it's going to cook that egg in a second when I turn it over. I think this might work, you know. What do you think? Do you think this is going to work? Oh, no, they didn't. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. Yeah. Bad boy! I prefer this toast that. Oh, that looks there. so good! I told you this wouldn't be a f He doesn't like it too much, but he's got to suck it up every now and again because me, the dog, and Jace love it. You can make this cheesy pasta with your own sauce, like you can make your own sauce really easily with cream cheese, uh, not cream cheese, double cream and butter and things like that. However, last time I made it, and this time as well, I've just used a fresh cheesy cream jar from the supermarket. So you can get any cheesy, and the reason I'm telling you guys this by the way is because the last time I showed making this, loads of you guys messaged asking how I did it. So easy, it's like one of those meals that you can't really be bothered cooking, so it's just super easy to go to. You can use any cheesy jar, you can get them in the fresh section at the supermarket, like the fridges near the pasta, like the fresh pasta. Or you can get them in the dried pasta section in like actual jars. I don't think they're like fresh. 
They're just like normal jars. Anyway, all you do is boil up some pasta. I've used some fresh broccoli, which I just boiled. I've boiled some frozen peas, which are just about to go in. Pop, I do two jars just because, you know, we're a big family and I like it creamy. I've only got one jar in here at the moment, but obviously I will. It's a bit dry as you guys can see. So I will be adding another jar. I just realized I needed to do this quite quickly because it's starting to um, overcook. Um, and then just pop the peas in. Oh, give it all a good old mix around. When all the vegetables are in, the peas and the broccoli, that's when I usually add the second jar. I do usually add some like garlic and onion salt and things like that, but I don't do that until after I've separated Jason the girls to mine and Chris's because obviously they don't need the extra salt and the flavor is just fine for them. And the only other thing I add is some cheddar cheese, which I just put on top like this and then mix it all in to make it really stringy and cheesy. See Jace River. Look at this. Wow. So here's the ingredients. I'm about to start preparing this now. I'm excited to try cheeseburger pasta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is actually my second time cooking, you know. I did it last <laughs> time. I think I'm actually getting a bit of a pro right now. <laughs> you actually do enjoy it, is it? What did you yeah. just say we should do every Friday? We should do like a mummy-daughter like cook night. So like when mum, uh, when dad and the girls go out swimming, we should do like a cook. So me and Isabel cook. Week. Yeah, we should challenge ourselves to do something different each week. Yeah. But then I remember the baby's due one. <laughs> Might be yeah, strapped. Like for a bit, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. I think <laughs> Brilly's liking the smell of this um, food that's cooking right now, though. Like, mm. <laughs> it's looking I good. Yeah. I think you need to add the onions now. <gasps> Yay! Pour the onions in a little bit at a time because I think we might have cooked too, cooked too many. Okay. <laughs> Isabel's just making up some chicken stock and I've just transferred it all to a different pan because we need to add in our pasta and the other pan, the pasta would definitely be like flying over the top of the other pan. So all we need to do now to finish off this meal is add the pasta I think. Yeah. It's a one pot as well as this so you don't actually have to cook the pasta first. You can just shove it in the pan with the mint and the chicken stock and then leave it to bring it to the boil and leave it to simmer for like 10-15 minutes. And then hopefully Dad and the girls will be home. Yeah, it smells so good so It far. does, it smells delicious. So far, it smells so good. It does. <laughs> All right, Isabel, first taste test, okay, what we're saying. Mm. It's delicious, isn't it? Oh, indeed. What are you saying, guys? Oh, nice. But we're just about to dish up dinner. We've got a really nice slow cooked gammon joint on the go today. Which smells divine in here. We're just cooking up some vegetables. We've got some roast potatoes going on. Roast and some coffee. potatoes and some Rice. Yorkshire puddings. Bye. Good. Yeah, let's do this. Delightful as well. <laughs> so we got some spaghetti bolognese going on tonight.
It's all good. Anyway, I've just put us a nice slow cooker chicken casserole in the machine thingy. Cooking away, smelling very, very good. But it's not one we'd ever cook again. Just didn't have much flavour and it just wasn't the best. Divine. <laughs> But only for four of us today because our little Isabel is at dancing and she'll be eating out with her friends We've got I know this doesn't look great guys, but this is pulled chicken So we just popped in the slow cooker some huge chicken breasts left them to cook for like four hours in like peppers and onions And some seasoning and bits and then literally it fell apart when we prodded it with a fork It looks so good. We're gonna have that with fajitas. There's fajitas, right? You're a bit chilly, babe you pull her chair somebody, out a little bit. Somebody's not too well today. Yeah, I think she's not feeling great. Not feeling great, hey? Maybe some nice dinner will make you feel better. Yeah? We've even got the hot sauce out tonight. There's May maybe as well. Mm. What are you saying, Esme? You're gonna have some hot sauce tonight? Yeah. Hey? Okay. Blurry yeah. Esme. <laughs> hot sauce, yeah? Yeah. Okay, deal. Okay. <laughs> Um, I thought I was getting a bit of a dab hand at this whole slow cooking malarkey <laughs> to the point where I thought I'd try myself at a lasagna today. I bought all of the ingredients kind of raw from the sh raw, raw from the shop. How stupid is that statement? Of course I bought them raw. I brought all the ingredients from the shop and did it all from scratch. And it took a long time, but I think I might have made it a bit too thick because this is kind of happening right now. It's kind of spilling out all over the top of the slow cooker quite badly. Like I did like quite a thick layer of, of like meat, pasta and cheesy stuff and then meat and pasta. And I made it thick and it's kind of expanding upwards and all coming out of the sides. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. It's got another four hours of cooking time. So fingers crossed, it's all good. Right, so I'm going to show you uh, me cooking tuna pasta bake. Whee! <laughs> Please don't turn off for the next few seconds. Okay, so now the pasta's done, we need to add in our two pasta bake sauces. Voila, one. This is where this meal is so easy. It's just literally two jars, some tins of tuna, pasta, done. Little beer and sauces, there we go. Throw in three cans of tuna, three tins of tuna. Three is more than enough. And mush it all in. 